Hey, it's Mike from Party for Crafts back again. I'm changing a little bit of the topic that I told you I was going to cover in my next video in the previous video. I'm working with the engineers at GWAKA Cloud to make some improvements in the online software. So I will focus on the online software once those changes are made. But this will be really exciting for Glowforge users. I'm going to talk about using this laser through a USB cable today. No internet needed. It all goes right through the USB cable. Watch. Check this out. So here I am in the GWAKA offline software. If you've used Lightburn before, this should look very familiar to you. It's very similar to Lightburn, especially um, when I click over here and you can see this work area um, on the, in the upper right. So basically, this is where you can load an SVG, you can resize that SVG, you can position it however you want using these controls over here. If I wanted to make these a little bit bigger, I could highlight them and click this lock. And let's say I wanted them to be 105 millimeters. I could type in 105 and they got a little bit bigger. So that is convenient. And that's just like light burn is these colors over here where I can do different settings for anything that's red and anything that's black. Those are very convenient and exactly like light burn. So currently what I want to do is I want to cut these red squares and I want to score black. Well, a score is just a cut that doesn't go all the way through. So you can see it still says laser cut there, but the settings that I'm using, the settings in the online version were percent and the settings in the offline version are millimeters per second. So I have the setting to cut all the way through at 15 millimeters per second, 70% min and max. I talked about minimum power in the last video. That's when it slows down to go around the corners. You need it to drop the power, but that's really only for scores. So on these, which I want scored, the minimum power is different than the maximum power. And the minimum power is generally right about where the laser barely turns on. Uh, most of the time, a laser does not turn on at 1% or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. There's a certain number where it finally turns on, and you want your minimum power to be just above that. So for me, you saw how many um, trials I did. These numbers are working out for me. Now, the thing that I could not figure out is the really thick lines that you saw in those trials are because it was way out of focus. I could not figure out in here how to focus it because there's a weird thing that you have to do to get it to focus. So again, you have to do the 17 minus the thickness of your wood. So this is 14, uh, mine is right around three millimeters, but not quite. So I put in the 14.14 measured with calipers. That's what it comes out to. And then I thought that would make it focus, but that didn't make it focus either. You have to, I don't know why, but you have to click the Z minus button to get it to send that number to the laser. And you saw it flashed up, please wait. Um, if I had the fan plugged in, you would have heard the fan get a little bit louder for a second, and now it's ready to go. So all I have to do next is click the start button and it will immediately start running this job. So I'll get ready to switch over to my camera and I will click the start button. When I went to run that one, I realized it was right on top of the last one that I did. But to show you, there's something really good that I like about this. When I drag it, it leaves a shadow behind of the last one. So I can move it right over here. And now I know it's not going to touch the last one. It'll be right next to it. Okay, so now I'm going to click start and I'm going to walk over to the other laser uh, with the camera and show you the job running. All right, that's it. It cut successfully. Came out good. 
Okay, so all in all, that went well. After a couple of tips from the GWAKA engineers, the Z minus button for focusing and typing in the focal length, I was able to get several successful cuts without any issues. That's a strong performance. Next steps are I'll hook it up with a network cable so I can have the camera image in the background, and then I'll try it with light burn and the network cable with the camera in the background. By then, the engineers will have made some improvements to the online software, and I'll make another video about that as well. So click the subscribe button and the notification button so you'll see when those videos come out, and I'll see you next time.